Uh, first off, I'd like to say I uh, apologize to the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Uh, just based on my actions uh, from that night of the incident that everybody saw in the video, uh, truly embarrassed from it and uh, just wish never, it never happened. Um, uh, that action really doesn't reflect who I am and uh, you know, as a team and as a uh, you know, coaching staff, everybody was supporting me and uh, I just thank my friends and family for sticking through me and uh, support me as I go through this and now I'm just looking to move forward from it. Corey, what led you to not being, uh, I guess, fully truthful about the incident at first? Um, I would just say uh, just too caught up in the moment. Just thought of any best answer to you know, say you know, as fast as I could and um, not try to cover myself up. But it was just you know, I, I really didn't have a train of thought at the time. I just said whatever came to my mind. Um, as of right now, it's just, you know, I've been able to practice three days in a row. That's probably the longest I got this all, this whole season. And I'm um, feeling better each day. And uh, hopefully I can get a chance to get out there and play against USC. And uh, just, you know, every day I'm taking it, you know, one step at a time. And uh, hopefully one practice can lead to another. And uh, pretty soon I'll be playing with the guys in, down in San Diego. So was that a full practice this week? Or how, what was your participation level? Um, full. And uh, I was getting banged around a lot, just like everybody else. And it uh, felt good to get back in the rhythm and um, just being a part of, you know, this atmosphere once again. And, uh, you know, just, you know, being around the guys makes me not think about the injury that I have. So I think the more mental strength that I keep, you know, it's only going to make things better for the long run. Were you healthy enough to play against Minnesota? Oh, uh, yeah, I was. Um, I just, you know, things just kind of. Took a turn, you know, me and Coach Chris talk. It was more about private things, but at that point it was just, you know, watching my team play and uh, watching the O-line, you know, thrive against Minnesota and, uh, you know, Dari and Taiwan do things that, you know, I love to see, and that was running the football. After the truth came out about the incident, what were some of the conversations with your teammates like? Um, it was, you no know, nothing too, you no know, different. It was just, you know, they talked to me as if I was a regular guy, and uh, that's what I look forward to. And I was able to talk to my friends and teammates, and, uh, without being questioned a lot, you know, from anybody else. So that's where I kind of felt at home, you know, kind of, you know, just, you know, within the team, it was, you know, they treated me as a, their friend and player. So uh, nothing really, you know, alternated uh, after that. Is that entire legal process done with that? Yes, it's done. And, uh, you know, as everybody was in the report that, you know, I did pay my citations and uh, uh, will not be going to court because, you know, I just accepted you know, the penalty and just, you know, paid it off and just moving forward from it. What no, was Coach Chris' reaction when you talked to him after he learned mm -hmm. that the original statement didn't mesh with what happened? Um, he was very understanding. Uh, and, you know, friend to friend, you know, coach to player, you know, you know I, I, I accept the, you know, the comments from him. And uh, you know, being a grown man, you have to you know, take some tough criticism. And uh, you know, followed by my actions, he you know, was kind of upset a little bit. You know, he, he was saying, at least tell me the truth. You know, I'm going to help you out in the long run. And uh, I kind of wish I didn't you know, skew my story a little bit. But uh, like I said, you know, it's, just, it's a mistake that I uh, hope to learn from, uh, move forward from it. And uh, you know, Coach Chris has been, another, been a great part of this. And uh, you know, if anybody from this situation I could look up to is him. And uh, you know, he's you know, been nothing but a positive role model, role model on how to handle these situations. And uh, just you know, you know, being thankful that you know, I'm still part of this team. Being that the injury was to your hand, was that affecting workouts at all? No, nah, no, nah, I still was able to play and I work out you know, as much as I could. And, um, you know, yeah, hand really didn't, you know, pull me back too much. How important Did is it for you to, if you can't play in this game, use it as a springboard for next season? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a very, very big game. And uh, just trying to roll into uh, next season and just, you know, play as if I don't have an injury. And uh, by that time, I'll you know, fully be healed up. I just think time isn't on my side, but you know, if I'm just playing through it, and uh, a lot of guys aren't playing this game 100%, just got to suck it up sometimes. Are you 100% coming back next year now? Has uh, that decision been made? Yeah, uh, coming back next year, you know, for my senior year, and just you know, hoping to you know, not recap on the season, but you know, build for a better season that I thought I would have this season, and um, you know, I just want to get back out there with the team, and hopefully we can you know make the playoffs next year. When did you make that decision? You were coming back. Um, I thought about that, you know probably the fifth game of the season and uh, when I really wasn't you know, able to play and I was just like, 
Um, and this year is really a waste to me and I really can't do anything. So why even try to put myself out there to try to go to the next level when I haven't really uh, put out much tape, uh, only played two years you know, as a backup. And I really didn't get the you know, primary role that I wanted to play in. So I was really fooling myself if I thought I was gonna you know, go to the next level already. Did you ask for an evaluation? Did you? No, I didn't, I didn't even you know, bother to do an evaluation. Uh, I talked with Coach Chris Cosetto and uh, you know, they were just understanding. And uh, they kind of knew right off the bat that I was coming back. And uh, I, I don't know who, they could see that. So I re it wasn't too surprising to them. Are you eager to put this year behind you given you know, what you had hoped it would be and, and where you're at right now? Yeah, I'm just waiting for the ball drop for 2016 to come already. <laughs> Not really liking uh, 2015 too much, and I don't think it's liking me either. So you know, I just can't wait to get in, you know, to uh, winter workout, spring ball, and uh, summer, and just get back into it. And uh, you know, just push all this behind me uh, because, like I said, this whole incident doesn't really reflect who I am. You had some lofty goals coming into this season. What are some of your goals for you next season? Um, to play. I mean, that's that's primary, you know, just to play the number one role that I you know dreamed of doing, and uh, you know putting this, uh, you know, grabbing the guys around me and just you know p putting this team uh, on a path that we should be, and, uh, and that's making it to the playoffs, uh, uh, beating these uh, high ranked teams like we got Ohio State and everybody else coming to the house uh, next year, and I'm very excited, but really can't focus on that too much. We still got you know another game to play in San Diego. With the young offensive line, are you excited? With the progress these guys have made. Oh, very excited. And uh, uh, Coach Rudy is doing a great job with those guys. And uh, too excited. And uh, wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be right without those guys coming up. They've been, they fought through a lot of adversity being a young line. And uh, you can see the growth that they had from game one to this game. And uh, I think uh, another season is only going to make those guys better. And uh, you know, I'm thrilled to see how they're going to come out. Were you at all intoxicated the night of the fight? No. And uh, no, the police can say, uh, say that. And uh, they didn't really have to do a breathalyzer test. So I was very respond responding to them, you know, cooperating very well. And uh, no, it was just one of those nights that's just, you know, it was very weird and never really get into those situations. So, uh, you know, after that, uh, just learned just to, you know, stay with some friends when you go home. And uh, yeah. You haven't um, seen those people at all or anything like that? or. Um, no, thank God. And uh, it's just, you know, I, I try to keep my distance. And, uh, you know, if anything were, you know, if I was to come across them, I would just, you know, be myself. I wouldn't draw too much attention, just walk past them, you know, as if nothing happened. And uh, I think that's what growing up and being mature about this whole situation uh, is about. And uh, uh, everything from now, you just learn from it. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, teach somebody else how to, you know, handle a situation as better as you did. How close are you, how close are you to 100% healthy? Um, I would say right now, I'll say a good, Still 85, and uh, I, I just, you know, I feel as if, you know, time is only going to, you know, heal this process after this bowl game, and uh, it's going to take some time off, do a lot of, you know, strength and conditioning, and uh, some rest in between that, and uh, just to get back to the 100% that I know I can get to.